Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. First of all, let me join many others and just thank all three of you for your service and your professionalism. Uh, I've had the opportunity to interact with you probably in ways you don't even remember in some cases uh, a lot over the course of your careers and uh, just have always been impressed again with the professionalism and the absolute dedication all three of you have shown to the country. So it's much appreciated and we wish you well and uh, General Milley and whatever your next endeavor is, but you certainly rendered exceptional service to our country. So thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to thank one other uh, entity uh, while I'm chatting here, and, and that's the United States Congress, because uh, uh, as General Milley went through the higher state of operational readiness we have and uh, some of the things we've accomplished, it struck me that Congress uh, has actually given uh, uh, the Department of Defense, and there's some differences in, even on this panel about that, more money than President Trump asked for and more money than President Biden has asked for. So Congress is, in, in a sense, responsible for those higher rates of readiness because we've used our judgment to say whatever the president's asked for may all be good. We think we need a little bit more. And I think that, that comes out of some of the things that happened with sequester and the Budget Control Act during, the, uh, during President Obama's era. But anyway, th those things have led us to a better position. And... Uh, my hope is uh, we'll do that again, quite frankly. I, I think your budget, there's a lot of good things in here. I think it needs to be more. You know, 3.2% in an era of 6% inflation is effectively a cut in inflation adjusted dollars. There's two areas I want to both ask you about and flag for you that, um, and for the committee that I'll, I'll be working on. And uh, it's uh, somewhat parochial, but I think it's in the national interest. Uh, the first is disappointed to see, particularly given the importance of artillery, as we've seen in um, uh, the situation in Ukraine, to see for the third year in a row, the Army has cut the uh, PIM, the Paladin Integrated Management Program. We managed to restore those cuts last year. I think probably, you know, we're still furnishing that, that system to the active and the National Guard, and we're now sending parts, lots of it to our allies and, and to the Ukrainians as well. So. Uh, I would just tell you there's not enough in the Army's budget to maintain the production lines that exist there. So I would ask you to, you know, why the cut? And, and the answer may be that you just have too many other things to do. I get it. Your, your business is tough choices. That's, but I, I would argue that's a bad choice right now, particularly given the situation in Ukraine. The second is one that uh, something that we all want to accomplish together. I just worry about the rate of it. Um, and that's the uh, transition from the E-3 to E-7 command and control platform. I have Tinker Air Force Base in my district. I have Fort Sill Army Post in my district. Um, and I'm all for transitioning from the E-3 to the E-7. It's a good decision. Should have honestly been done some time ago. But the rate of retirement for those E-3s is well ahead of the rate of acquisition. Uh, and that's partly just a production problem. I mean, takes a while to get a new aircraft up and running. And I worry about that interim time, because I think we are in a very dangerous world here where you're going to lose capacity. I'm not for keeping the E3s. I just want to retire, bring on E7s as we retire E3s so that we never put uh, you in the situation where you have to deny a combatant commander some capability that he or she thinks they need. Uh, and those are two I would just flag for you, and then ask for any response about uh, about either of those uh, those uh, items I mentioned. Uh, well, first of all, uh, let me thank you and, and the entire Congress for, you know, your incredible support over the years, and I absolutely agree with you that uh, we could not be who we are and do what we do without the, the tremendous support, tremendous con congressional support that we are provided routinely. Uh, so uh, uh, thanks so much for that. Uh, on the Paladin, um, I, we continue to see the importance of artillery, you know, in the, in the war fighting. Of course, you've seen us really hustle to make sure that Ukrainians have not only the, the weapon systems, but the munitions that they need to, uh, to re remain effective uh, in this fight. Um, the Army feels that, uh, uh, the rate that they're, they're, they're being produced right now, uh, it meets their needs. Uh, and it also allows them to invest in, uh, in future capabilities as well. 
And, and so as the needs change, then the Army, of course, will, will just, continue. Just to, to make the point, Mr. Secretary, not to interrupt you, it meets your needs because Congress put more of them in there than you asked for last time. And we're reverting back to the same number. And I would just suggest, look, you got a lot of stuff across a lot of areas to deal with. And I respect that. You have to make a lot of really hard decisions. This one, I think, is one that uh, you run the risk of shutting down the line to some degree. So, I mean, we intervened the last two times and got it. And, and again, you got what you need. Uh, maybe we can do that again. But uh, I, I don't think they're being produced at the rate we need in your budget. They are being produced at the rate we need right now. Okay. So I interrupted you, and I apologize. Went over time. Yield back. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Russell, Russell, Rupersberger, excuse me. Thank you, thank you Mr. I Chairman. Think that's very one of these.